Hey guys, it's Brie here at Bossman Branch Farm and today I thought I'd show you how I'm setting up my seed starting space in the basement. While usually we use our glass greenhouse to grow all of our seedlings this year because we're not on site as we work on our home remodel project, we are actually starting here in the basement. And this is what I did our first year at the flower farm. I didn't have a greenhouse, we just had a little furnace room in the basement. It had no natural light, just like this space has no natural light. And I was still able to successfully grow a lot of seeds. This is where soil blocking actually really comes in handy, but this video for once is not about soil blocking. Today's just gonna be all about the seed setup. So if you have a not ideal space for starting seeds like I do, you're gonna wanna watch today's video. Let's go. Now, this whole setup that we're doing today, you could take and spin and apply in any different way in your home. You could take these shelves and put them next to a window so you get the benefit of a little bit of additional light. You don't have to use the lights as much. That would be ideal. And then that way you're only having to supplement with the lighting. But if you're like me and you don't have a lot of space, or maybe you have kids or animals who like to get into your seedlings, I have cats and my cats always get into my seedlings and they step on them. So for me, I like to have them in actually an out of the way space. It just works better. So what we're using is a storage space. So behind me, well, I guess let's move the suitcase. All right, maybe now you can see better. Behind me, this is our storage shelf that we're going to be using to put all of our seeds on. So we already actually have some seeds going here. You can see these are our wooden trays that we've been using and they are all set to go, but we're gonna actually take over two more shelves. And this is just a wire baker's rack. So it's a 48 inch, you can get them in different sizes. I like the ones with adjustable height shelving so that we can kind of adjust things as we go. And then I'm gonna be putting my lights in. We'll talk about that in a second. First, let me get this all cleared off. Okay, so I've got my shelves cleared off, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my lights on. Now, I know that sometimes people like to tell you that you need these special lights with all these special light ranges and all this stuff. I have personally never bought into that and also I don't have the kind of money to be buying all of those fancy lights because they can be expensive. So I'm going to show you what I use instead. Uh, these are just your regular shop lights and these are actually LEDs and I got them at Costco. This is the label for them. Um, again, they're nothing special, but we'll take a look at our seedlings here in a second and you'll see they just do fine. It's all about the height. If you're using a light that's not a grow light, you just want to keep it closer to the top of your seedlings and I leave them on for longer as well. So while most lights will tell you to cycle them on and then off for about eight hours, I cycle mine on for longer. So I usually only have them off for about six hours. I don't know if that really matters or not, but they seem to be doing just fine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put these in. And one more thing is when you're putting your lights in, you wanna pay attention to where the ends are because these all connect into one. So you can string multiple of these together. But if you're doing that, you wanna make sure you're paying attention to which end so that you can plug in to the right end, if that makes sense. All right, let's put that. Okay, now typically I would be using some chain, some metal chain with a little hook on the end to hang these on the shelves, but I forgot it back at home in my greenhouse. So instead, I'm going to be using this wire today. This is the same craft paper wire that I use when I do my flower arranging. It's just wire. Um, and that way I can thread them through and I make a loop. And that loop is then adjustable, so I can adjust the height up or down as the seedlings grow. Same thing works with those little chains. They hook right onto the shelves and then you hook it onto the light. But... I'm not going all the way back to the house, so we'll be using these. And I do like to use the 48 inch shelves because they're the same length as the lights are. So if you use a shorter light, then you won't be able to fully light the whole shelf. Now we'll just hook this right onto our shelf. All right, I've got my lights all wired. I'm going to pop them on up onto our shelves and then we're gonna take a look at the ones that have been growing under these lights and also do a little look at how our wood soil blocks are doing. All right, now we're gonna get them all plugged in and make sure they work. Ah. All right, so now we have three shelves all set up glowing with light and ready to seed into. So some of the things that we are getting ready to seed right now this week, we already have our stock going. We are growing our sweet peas already, but those I'm not doing down here. It is too warm down here for the sweet peas. 
The sweet peas are actually sequestered in a south facing room and we've closed up all of the heat vents in that room so it gets a little bit cooler. It's still not as cold as I'd like. Um, here probably if the weather looks nice I'm going to be moving those to the unheated greenhouse so they're okay as long as they don't get below 20 degrees at night. They are happy little sweet peas. So we're going to go ahead and get those going. We have our snap peas I am starting. I'm starting my onion seeds this week. Snapdragons we are getting ready to start. We have our Lysianthus going already. Those are in a different section of the basement. I'm also planting our native grasses. So I like to plant trays full of native grasses because we're trying to rehabilitate a lot of our land to more native meadow and prairie space. I like to save seed for my own plants because it's much cheaper that way. And then I just start them inside in trays because we get a better, more reliable germination because our springs are so dry here in Colorado. We never know if we're gonna get rain or not. And if we don't get rain, we don't get germination even on those drought tolerant things. So I'm gonna start all of those things here this week. So let's take a look at how all of these things are growing under these lights. Come with me. Wow, it's bright over here. Okay, now you might remember our video from last week where we showed our wood trays being built. These are the ones that we did not waterproof, um, but they're still doing just fine. They don't seem to be getting too waterlogged or anything like that. Um, this one has the wool in the bottom. This one does not have the wool in the bottom. And because we're having a top water, we are losing a little bit of the division between the blocks as we call them. So I'm going to go through with my putty knife one more time and I'm just going to divide them up. But I want to give you a better look at how they are growing. You can see they are nice and green and very healthy looking indeed. And again, these have not seen any light of day, no natural light in here, just the light from these fluorescent lights. But you can see how close they are to the top of the light. So these are, so how deep is that? Like maybe three inches from the top of the light to the top of the ceiling. They're really pretty close. And that is what makes these lights just as good as the grow lights, you know, with grow lights, with grow lights, you don't have to have them this close. They could be all the way up at the top, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, I just put them on these, you know, little wires and then I just move this up or down. So when I need to adjust it, I can lower this by just untwisting the little knot here and that lowers the light. And if I want to lift the light, I just bring it up and then I just twist my wire. So there you have it. You don't need fancy grow lights. Okay, so when I got these shop lights, they were about $22 a piece. So this whole setup here, I have six lights on. So six times 22 equals 132. And then I have the shelving unit itself. But of course, I was already this is already here. Remember that you can always check Craigslist for these things. You can buy these shelves used. You can often buy shop lights that are used. And remember that starting my own plants from seed saves me a lot of money. So I've actually done the calculations. It's quite a lot that I save starting things from seed. And I get to really control exactly what it is that I am starting, what is in it, all of those good things that I like to have a little bit of control over in my garden. So compare this to a popular gardening website where they are selling a rack with lights for over a thousand dollars. So if you're trying to save a little bit of cash this year, starting your garden and you need to get your grow lights set up, you can use this. Now this is another reason why soil blocking is great because here in the early part of the season when I need to be using a lot of lights, if I start my seedlings in the little tiny baby soil blocks, then I don't have to use as much space on heat mats or under lights because as the season goes on, we get more daylight. I can move this rack up by a southern window and I don't have to use as much lighting. So it can actually save me money by starting seeds in the smaller tiny soil blocks. Even though I've told you guys this, those little soil blocks are a little bit finicky and they can be a little bit trickier to use. So if you're new to soil blocking, stick with those medium ones, but it does still save a lot of space. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, grab my other fiberglass trays. So here we have the wood trays. Now, actually I made these too long. So remember when we built these, these are 24 inches long and I made them a little bit too long because now this one can't fit lengthwise. So this end doesn't get as much light as the other end, but I just rotate it every once in a while. But let's take a look real quick at how these are growing and I'm gonna just manually divide my blocks a little bit here. Oh, I forgot one of the more important parts. <laughs> of setup, which is having a fan. If you're doing inside seed starting, it's really, really key to have a fan. This is Mr. Crab. 
He protects against fungus, gnats, and algae. This one's really kind of undersized for this many. A box fan would be better, but remember that whenever you have a fan on, you're going to have to water more frequently, so just bear that in mind. Right, Mr. Krabby? Mm-hmm. She's lost it. All right, let's water. So as I brought these down, I saw some fungus gnats flying around. It's not uncommon when you're doing indoor seed starting to get fungus gnats. Don't freak out, but you do want to get on them early. So usually I will have yellow sticky traps in here. That will help give me a cue when they're starting to be around. They'll get stuck to those sticky traps. And Michael, Gordon, but also it helps control the adult population so they get stuck to their I didn't have, they didn't have any sticky traps today at the store, so instead I'm gonna use some paper, smear it with Vaseline, and they'll get stuck to those. And I also will use mosquito bits when I'm doing indoor seed starting. Now, I don't like to use BT, this is BT. It's a biological control use for mosquitoes and also for fungus gnats. So I don't like to use it outside in the garden because we are learning that there is actually some BT resistance happening, which is not a good thing. And we're also, and I just, it also just targets non-target insects, like non-target caterpillars, that kind of thing. So I don't like to use it outside, but I will use it indoors in seed starting. So what I do is I get these bits, they're called mosquito bits, and it says also controls fungus gnats. And I don't make a tea, some people will make a tea, I just don't find that that effective. Um, I like to just sprinkle it on and then water them in. Then the fungus gnat larva will feed on that BT and it will kill the larval stage. And you will want to use non-chlorinated water to water this in. You don't want to kill the BT with chlorinated water. So my water in particular, I know just has a lot of chlorine in it. I can smell it. So I just put my water into my can about a day before I'm going to water with it. And then the chlorine naturally dissipates. I'm just going to redivide my little blocks here. And you can see down here on this end where they're looking a little bit leggier, that's where they're not under the light. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate them as well. And they're also due for a thinning. These are stock. So stock actually can handle having two plants in each little cell, but some of them have three or more. So those I'm going to thin down to just two. You just don't want to keep too many cell, too many plants in each of these cells because they start competing for light and for nutrients. So especially as they start to get bigger, it's best to thin them before they get too big. I'm just taking my fingers and I'm just pinching. You could use a little set of scissors. I just usually forget that I need to have them and so I just use my fingernails because if I wait for too long to do this pinching, then they tend to get away from me. So I just do it when I'm thinking about it. So I just use my fingernails. It's okay to not have special tools. All right, next let's see how many of our soil block fiberglass trays we can fit on these shelves. I've got my fiberglass trays here on the shelf. So you can see I can fit two. There's one back there. These are the nine by, and these are the nine by 26 inch trays. So I can fit two of these on each of these shelves. I kind of have this awkward space down at the end, so that's actually where I'm going to use these little ones. These are the 8 by 10 So I can use one, two, three, four of those. So I have one, two, three, four, and then two of these. So if I'm using the mini soil blocks, the little, little ones, I can fit 280 of those on each of these trays, so that's 560. Plus I can fit 80 on each of these trays, so eight times four, 320. So 320 plus 560, I can start 880 seedlings on each shelf. So if you're not impressed yet with soil blocking and these fiberglass trays, um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. This is a really handy setup. I like how it all works together. There's literally no space wasted. So once we get these full of those soil blocks, there's literally not a square in here that is not used. I hate nothing more than when I have my seed starting area all set up and then I have silly unused space in there that is does not have seedlings in it. Now, if you're using the medium soil blocker, the medium size, you can fit 60 of those on each of these trays. So 60 here. 120 plus each of these will hold 20 plus 80 here. So you can do 200 seedlings of the medium 
on these shelves. Hey guys, that's it for today. I just wanted to show you how easy it can be to set up your own seed starting area in your basement. If this is the only space that you have, don't feel like you can't start seeds. If you don't have a fancy greenhouse, if you just have a corner of your office or your house or whatever it is, you can still start seeds at home and it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'm gonna go ahead and get my onions started. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you around here next time in the basement.